Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation about the relationship between classroom environment and student course attrition and the perceptions of student engagement. I'm Lori Cooper, and I'm a professor, associate professor at Wilkes University in the Doctor of Educational Leadership program. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Franz Fry. I'm also an associate professor at Wilkes University, and my um, area of focus is at the undergraduate education level with um, a particular interest in special education. So we were actually approached by an institution of higher education in Northeastern Pennsylvania that is located near our institution. And this institution had partnered with Herman Miller to equip two learning spaces in their, um, in their classrooms. And they wanted to know if the, um, the investment in these learning spaces was helping with student comfort and student um, willingness and um, propensity for a, a student attrition or retention in their, um, their programs and in their courses. So we looked at the learning environment impact on, this, on student in attrition in, is the area of interest for our research study. Um, it is a little bit difficult to define student attrition due to various um, interpretations of that throughout various grade bands and um, in different environments. But for the purposes of our study, we wanted to make sure that the focus was where um, students would incur debt of taking courses, but not necessarily obtaining a degree. Um, we actually studied course attrition instead of program attrition, but course attrition contributes to program attrition. And so that was where we focused in our particular study. Okay, so the purpose and the significance of this study was to look at the research problem, which was to find out if the, to find out what the um, level of the learning studios had on uh, having students in a learning studio versus having them in a traditional environment, and then being able to determine if one of those had a greater impact on course attrition or not. And then we also looked at a qualitative piece, which we'll discuss a little bit more in the future here, um, trying to get student perceptions about why. So the purpose of this was to investigate this further to find out if the institution of higher ed had invested their money um, in an appropriate manner, in a fiscally responsible way. And the significance of this was to be able to find out if, or uh, to be able to add to the literature, to be able to find out if um, the, student experience is impacted by the learning environment in a higher ed setting. So our, we had two research questions that we were interested in. The first one was to determine the relationship between the learning environment, which would be either the traditional environment or the learning studio environment and course attrition rates. And then the second research question was to find out what the perceptions of the students in a higher ed environment in either that traditional or learning studio environment were regarding that retention and attrition. So just a little further explanation about a learning studio environment. It's um, designed so that there are comfy chairs, there are more opportunities for technology in the environment, um, opportunities for students to work together in small groups without having to shuffle desks around, that sort of thing. So um, a much different, much more, I would say, relaxed environment than a traditional classroom. And learning studios also have a great deal of flexibility to them. So the um, faculty member and the students can work together to have um, more flexibility with the seating, which isn't always necessarily the case in a traditional classroom as well. So our theoretical framework for our study was uh, sociocultural theory. We thought that um, looking at Vygotsky's theory um, where human behavior and um, social interaction would be um, a focus of um, 
you know, this learning studio and traditional classroom experience and would it be a, a way for us to be able to an analyze our data. Um, Vygotsky would say that the environment can enhance or detract from the ability to interact with other people. And so um, we felt that this would be a lens that we could use in this study to be able to help um, sift through our, um, our analysis. In addition to Lev Vygotsky, we have research also from Coates in 2005, which applied Vygotsky's work into a higher education setting by looking at student engagement and how students will co-construct knowledge together. And so um, these pieces um, lended themselves nicely to our, our, our investigation. Uh, we decided to do a mixed method study. So um, my responsibility was the quantitative portion, um, my primary responsibility. We worked together on a lot of the other pieces, but, um, but my piece was to look at the quantitative um, analysis. And so what we did was um, we did an ex post facto review of, um, of the, the data that had been provided by the institution of higher ed in an aggregate way. And um, then we looked at, and there were 3,296 participants that were um, provided for us in the aggregate data. And we were provided with the, um, the type of learning environment that the students were in, whether it was learning studio or in a traditional environment. And we were also able to compare their environment with whether they completed the course or not. So the course attrition was compared then in an ex post facto way with a phi correlation um, to be able to find that out. And then um, there was no treatment in this study because it was ex post facto. And um, the, the setting for the quantitative piece was just all students who were enrolled at this institution of higher ed that had courses in either a learning studio or traditional environment. And then um, the quantitative or the qualitative piece is something that we will discuss a little bit more thoroughly in the next slide as well. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I think that's pretty much what I just described, Karen. So if you would like to talk about yours. Sure. So for the qualitative portion, we created a survey monkey survey that had a total of 24 questions. There 670 some students were invited by the Institute, Institution of Higher Education to join in responding to this SurveyMonkey survey. And unfortunately, perhaps only 80, 80 students responded that they would be willing to participate. And then when all the survey information was collected and we opened up, we found that 44 of the 80 actually indicated with the first question that yes, they met the criteria that we had established and were interested in participating, but then did not answer any of the other questions in the survey. So that resulted in 36 actual respondents to the survey 10 identified themselves as reflecting from the perspective of the traditional classroom and 26 respondents identified themselves as reflecting from the learning studio environment. So when we analyze the data in the quantitative portion of the mixed methods study, um, the sample size, like I said, was 3,296 students and the phi correlation test was performed on the existing data because they were nominal variables and course attrition and learning environment were the two variables that were compared. So when we um, analyzed the qualitative data, we identified really four themes based on the responses. And I'll talk a little bit about each theme. The first one was a sense of belonging. And actually both the traditional and the learning studio respondents re did report a feeling of a sense of belonging in their classroom environment. Interestingly though, the folks responding from the learning studio perspective were um, much more focused on the classroom environment 
while the traditional and setting folks were really much more focused on um, a sense of belonging, being dependent upon the instructor and the students who were members of the class. So the next area was the configuration of the room. Um, by far, the respondents from the learning studio talked about the uh, configuration being much more comfortable, much more relaxed, and the traditional folks really didn't talk about either of those factors at all. They were much more focused on, yeah, it's a class. <laughs> um, and the participation, uh, the folks from the learning studio perspective indicated that they were more engaged in the learning process and provided more opportunities. They were, were provided more opportunities for positive interaction among their peers and also with the instructor. It was interesting that their responses indicated a strong agreement that the engagement from the learning studio um, at actually 37% was higher than those in the traditional setting at 26%. So they felt um, just a little stronger about being more engaged as a participant. The learning studio respondents also indicated they were much more comfortable offering opinions and felt like they were more part of the class than their ex the folks who were um, presenting experiences from the traditional settings. And then the fourth theme was the rapport with the instructor. Folks from the learning studio indicated that they felt much more comfortable overall with the instructor, especially when, and I quote, the instructor takes a seat among us for group discussions. Their um, appreciation was also indicated that the instructor was moving more freely about the space and therefore students felt less intimidated by the course content, which then made them more comfortable and relaxed in the environment. Others indicated that they appreciated the different modes of instruction that the um, professors used rather than focusing solely on lecture, which was a comment also made in the traditional setting that the traditional setting um, provided traditional instruction, i.e. lecture. Students in the traditional setting also felt that establishing rapport, again, was solely dependent upon the instructor and the um, peers in the classroom rather than the environment in which they were learning. So moving on then to discuss our findings, we um, really found some positive aspects and then also some areas that were noted by the respondents in the, in the um, qualitative portion of the study as um, areas of concern, we're calling them. So the positives, actually the quality of instruction in the learning studio, 68% rated that quality of instruction as very good and 20 additional percent rated it as good. 12% indicated that the instruction in the learning studio environment was adequate. From the traditional perspective, 55% reported that the instruction was very good and 45% rated it as good. So some positives really in both settings, I would say. Um, the aspects of the learning studio that supported the educational experience, I have a few quotes to share about those. The first one is, after the novelty of the first class or two, there was really no difference. So I'm not so sure that that's a positive or a negative, but I found like it was an interesting comment that the novelty in the first couple of classes made it more enticing perhaps, but after that and after students settled in, this particular student felt like there was real no, really no difference as far as ex, um, supporting their educational experience. Another student responded to say the environment of the classroom and instructor presenting was a strong positive. It made me and others comfortable and it did not feel like your typical classroom. So um, that statement in itself supported our 
hypothesis, if you will, that um, it would be a more comfortable environment for learning. The learning studio provides an atmosphere that makes learning feel less intimidating. These studios make classes more enjoyable because they are more laid back and tend to make students feel more comfortable in their learning environment. And yet another quote, it was a comfortable learning environment while I felt relaxed and not too bored like in a traditional classroom setting. And I focused better. So I, I thought that was interesting that for whatever reason, the student perhaps felt more engaged and therefore didn't become bored with the content or the space or whatever the case might be. Um, and then going to uh, aspects that did not support or concerns, if you will, in that environment in the learning studio, two students actually felt very strongly and I quoted one of them to say, the room is so bright from all of the windows and natural sunlight coming through. For those with less pigment in our eyes, it burns. And that was all capital letters and bold faced and lots and lots of S's in that quote. And another student concurred that with that same statement and said that it was really annoying with all the light coming through the windows. Now, that could or could not directly relate to the learning studio environment. It could have been the classroom, it could have been the time of day and the way the sunlight was shining through, but that's information for this Institute of Higher Ed to take to heart when they are designing these programs. And, you know, do they have some of those window blinds that, that you can um, mask the sunlight a little bit, but still allow for the direct sunlight to come through. I don't know, but that was um, something for them to really think about. Um, another student said, at times, the technology in the room was faulty and did not allow for the teacher to give comprehensive lessons. Again, another comment that was really impactful for the folks at the Institute of Higher Education as they are thinking about moving forward and investing funds in classroom environments. And finally, I felt like this statement was also very important where a student, um, the quote is, not enough professors know how to use the school's technology. The smart boards are a huge waste of money when all but one or two of my professors just use them to project PowerPoints. Room 201 also has had issues with playing sound in several of my classes, and the internet connection at the school regularly makes it hard for videos to stream. I have also never been in a class that made use of all of the assets the learning studios have to offer. And so those are telling statements for the folks uh, at the Institution of Higher Education as they're considering how to move forward and how to invest their funds to make this um, option most appropriate for the students who are coming to their um, university for coursework. So in addition to the findings that Karen found in her qualitative piece, um, my quantitative piece found that there was um, not a strong correlation at all between learning environments, um, between learning studios and traditional environments with regard to course attrition, which we found to be interesting um, when we look at the student perceptions and how there seem to be some strong feelings on both sides of the fence um, there as well. So it seemed that you know, the learning environment was not necessarily impacting the course attrition, but perhaps the um, the method of instruction used by the instructor um, lending itself more toward a more conversational style, a more relaxed tone and that kind of thing, um, which lends itself really to the theoretical framework that we used um, from Vygotsky, um, looking at social interaction and co-construction of knowledge as being foundational to learning. So, um, our recommendations for future research are to um, look at how the configuration of space impacts relationships and maintains human connection, how teaching practices are perceived by students. And an additional one we um, were also wondering about was how the um, learning environment 
impacts program attrition because we had looked specifically at course attrition. These are our references and here is some contact information for us. Thank you so much for attending our presentation. Thanks everyone, have a good day.